we can draw a couple parallels between Advent and Lent. So similar to Lent, the season of Advent was originally 40 day, a 40 day fast in preparation for Christmas. Um, later it was reduced to four weeks and there was less emphasis on fasting, but it's still meant to be a penitential season, a season that we prepare for the coming of our Lord. Another parallel between the uh, two seasons is halfway through Lent, we have a day called uh, Laetare Sunday. It's a break from the penitential season in order to rejoice because the Paschal mystery at Easter, it's getting closer. Well, today we've reached the halfway point in Advent, and the church has given us Gaudete Sunday. It's a day to rejoice because the Lord's close at hand. And the term, it literally means rejoice. And it's a theme that we hear throughout our readings today. Our first reading, it's from the prophet Zephaniah. And most of the book uh, is a little bit different tone than the tone that we hear today. So the first couple chapters of this book, it's about judgment, the day of the Lord, and really uh, God's condemnation of sin. But today's reading, it speaks of joy. It's joy because the Lord will come and set his people free who were held captive in Babylon and lead them back to their land. But even more, this joy, it points, points to Christ, who's God in our midst. And he doesn't come to bring judgment against us, but Zephaniah says, the Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. And so our Lord, he comes to show us mercy a mercy he wishes all of us to receive, so we should rejoice. As St. Paul says in our second reading, rejoice in the Lord always. And to kind of emphasize his point, he repeats himself saying again, rejoice, because our merciful Lord has come to be with us and save us from sin and death. Now, for some of us, it may be more difficult to rejoice than for others. Maybe we haven't been as faithful to God as we would have liked to be over this past year, or we don't rejoice much during this time of year because the holidays remind us of friends and family that we may have lost. Or we could be feeling a little bit guilty um, uh, about not really preparing well for Christmas. We kind of focus more on the secular side of Christmas with gifts and food, but then we don't prepare ourselves and our children for the most important uh, theme of Christmas, really the reason of Christmas, which is the birth of our Lord. Well, in our gospel, we hear about different types of people that come to uh, John the Baptist in the wilderness. Uh, it first, the gospel first speaks of crowds, then more specifically, it speaks of tax collectors, and finally, it speaks of soldiers. And they all go out to the desert to repent and to learn what to do. And each of these people, you'll notice that they have different backgrounds. No two are the same, and no two are in the same place in their spiritual lives. Well, like our gospel reading, all of us come from different backgrounds. Some of us are less faithful to God than others, and some are saints here on earth. But no matter where we are in our relationship with God, a question that's important for all of us is, what should we do? And this question, it's probably come up a lot in our lives, like the times we don't feel like we're making any progress in our spiritual life, or when we go off course and we're living a life of sin and we're kind of down and out without any direction in life. Um, at those moments, we could really wonder, what should I do? Uh, there's a story that I shared with, uh, with the youth this uh, past Friday. We had adoration in here. And back when I was looking into religious life, um, I visited a monastery in Massachusetts. And it was winter and cold. And uh, the day I was planning to leave, it started to snow. And so I left as quickly as possible. The monks offered for me to stay, um, but I didn't want to miss my flight. And so I got out of there as early as possible in the morning. Um, and when I hit the road, uh, the snow just started piling up. And on my way to the airport, um, I saw a sign for a Walmart. And I must, I guess because I was young and naive, I decided that it would be a good idea to stop at Walmart uh, to kind of fill up on snacks before I got on the plane. Um, and as I made my way down the exit road to Walmart, uh, my car went sideways and it began to slide. 
and it stopped after gently tapping uh, a signpost that was kind of in the middle of the uh, uh, little intersection thing around the median. And um, uh, uh, when it did that, I was really worried. I got out, I checked the car, and I was relieved that there was no damage. Um, but there was also a lot of adrenaline. And in that moment, I realized what I shouldn't have done. I shouldn't have gone to Walmart. Um, <laughs> so, but more importantly, uh, the thing I learned in that moment is that uh, you shouldn't go off course in a blizzard. But if you do, get back on course. Well, our spiritual lives, they're kind of like this. It's easy for us to get distracted from the goal. We take our eyes off our Lord, and then things become more about us. And very quickly, God takes a back seat in our lives. Uh, and um, I would say whether we go off course or not, the most important thing to do in these moments is to get back on course or to stay the course. And one way to do this is to turn to our Blessed Mother, um, if you haven't realized, today's actually the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Um, it's a little disappointing because she got trumped this year because her feast day fell on the third Sunday of Advent. So that third Sunday, it takes priority over Our Lady. Um, but still, uh, turning to our mother uh, um, to, in order to get back on course or to stay the course. And uh, this message of Our Lady of Guadalupe is very important. Um, she appeared to Juan Diego, um, and the message she presented to him that was for the natives there, the Aztec people, um, was to turn away from uh, worship of false gods and turn and worship the one true God. And Mary's role in salvation history is to be a mother to us all, just like she was to Juan Diego and those Aztec people. And like any mother who cares for their children, she wants what's best for us. And that's why she always leads us to her son. And I would say that's also why she's such a great person to turn to with the question from our gospel, what should we do? Because her response, it'll be the same command that she gave to the servants at the wedding feast of Cana. Do whatever he tells you, meaning do whatever our Lord tells us. And in scripture today, our Lord, what our Lord tells us is to change our ways, to get on course. He speaks to us through John the Baptist, calling us to repentance, telling us to do what's just in the sight of God. And the most just thing that any of us can do is giving what's due to God. That's our praise and worship, and really giving our whole lives to God and doing His will. And Mary, she's an example of the one who did the will of God perfectly. She's the disciple that all of us are challenged to become. And she says in her canticle at the Annunciation, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Well, when we do the will of God, brothers and sisters, when we walk in his ways, our souls will magnify the Lord, will reflect the glory of God, which should be cause for great rejoicing, because then we'll see all the good that God's doing in our lives, and hopefully, with Mary, we'll be able to say, God has looked with favor on his lowly servant.